Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Aaliyah Johnson Roberts, and I am here with Dr. Obiyama Martin. And this is the impact where we have real conversations with real people, providing real resources around child care, education, entrepreneurship, and more. Um, so this is our first episode. This is our first episode. Um, so I definitely want to start by sharing a little bit about myself. Um, again, I am Malia Johnson Roberts. I have been an um, executive director and co-owner of two star four in Pennsylvania. That's a high quality education program. Um, so we serve over 250 children at this time. Um, but again, I've been an executive director owner of child care programs. Um, we built it from inception um, all the way up to, again, Star for High Quality uh, Center. So uh, we are here today because I believe so much in this work that I don't want to keep it to myself. And I think it's important for everyone to hear about the work that early childhood education does, um, how it impacts individuals, how entrepreneurs can um, take a passion and make it a business and impact not just children, but families, the community, um, employees, and the economy overall. Um, so that's the purpose of being here. But not only that, because I know for me, I am more than an executive director. I am more than an entrepreneur. I'm also a wife. I'm a mother and I have a life. So I think it's important for us to talk about entrepreneurship. How do we balance who we are um, and still enjoy our lives while also pushing forward in the missions that we have? Um, so that is who I am. And with me is Dr. Obiyama Martin. Hello, hello, good afternoon. How are you today? I am breathing on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being here. Um, you wanna share with the people a little bit about yourself? Sure, so um, I always get like stuck every time I have to introduce myself. And I don't know why as much <laughs> as I talk. I don't know why, but for those of you who are tuning in, I first just want to say like, I'm super, super excited for the impact because it's going to be an impact. Uh, the conversations that we are going to have, the discussions, the resources, the strategies, this is going to be a phenomenal platform with real resources and real strategies. So I am Dr. Obiyama Martin. I have been in the field of early education for, oh my goodness, 20 years, 20 wow. years, 20 years. years. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> I started out in, in 2002. I started out 2002. I, um, yeah, I, I actually, July 7th will be 20 years for me. Wow. Oh, we have to celebrate. We have to celebrate. <laughs> Yes, the last. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I started the last seven twenty. What I say? Two thousand two. Two thousand two. Lord, I cannot believe it. Twenty yeah. years. Oh, we turning up. We're celebrating. <laughs> we. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, I'm having a moment. <laughs> you guys heard it first. So we're going to celebrate. So know that in July, we're celebrating. Okay, I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm going to let you go ahead and do all of that. Um, but you guys, so so I have, I've worked in every aspect of um, early education from being a, a, a provider to being a director, being an owner, being an advocate being um, an administrator, a consultant, a trainer, a coach, a bus driver, housekeeper, a cook, <laughs> bottle washer, Sounds about teacher, right, right? I, I've really worked in every aspect of the field. Yeah. And I feel like I, so many people be able to relate to that because that's, that's what <laughs> you do. And That'd be another topic for another time, but I feel like we don't list out all those things, like all those things that we do. Um, a lot of times you hear childcare, early childhood education, you don't realize that all that stuff happens. But it, it really does. does. It yeah. really does. Because yeah. as soon as somebody call out, that's now your job. Yes. <laughs> Here you go. 
Look, we I I gotta figure out. Matter of fact, I feel like we should reach out to people and find out all the different things that they do and create a list. Yeah. I yeah. think we can create a list of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because you know, and, and what's really important though, too, because Leah, you know, we're always getting people to ask us or say they want to get into child care and and really don't have a clue i think to some degree is it is um is glorified or like lucarized or i don't even know the word but it's not what people think it is while it is profitable i'm not saying that it is rewarding i'm not saying that what i am saying is don't think because you see one or two or three on the same block or in the same zip code that is easy. Right. Not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. Quality is not easy. There you uh, go. Warehousing children is easy. There you go. Yeah, that's the difference. <laughs> big difference. And that's a big difference. So <laughs> is that that's a huge difference. So um now I can't wait. I, I notated that with the 20 years, but um and that's a long that's a long time to have done this work. That's a long time to have done this work. I cannot believe it. Yeah. yeah. 20 years. Yeah. July 7th. That's when that's when I and listen, July 7th, 2002, it was not my intention, just like it wasn't yours. It was not my intention to be working with nobody babies. Yep. Right. But I was I was married and I had two children. And I went to a church where this lady had, uh, she had five children. She couldn't afford to send them to camp for the summer. And I said, I will watch your kids for you. They were around the ages of my, actually I had three. So I had one, my my husband had one, and then we had one together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. And it, but, but so we, we had three. Um, and, and so our kids were around the ages of, of her kids. And I was just like, you know, um, just provide me with some food or some money for some food, you know, and I watch the children and Leah by the end of August, 2002, wait a minute. Was that 2000? Okay. Wait a minute. I had Joshua 2000. I had Joshua December 20th, 2000. Right. So yes, 2002. So by the, by the end of August, 2002, I had 20 children that did not belong to me in my house. Wow. Okay. And my dad was like, I think you need to open up a daycare. I was like, yeah, I think I should too. I had one, but. (laughs) Right. But prior to that, I never. I never had no interest in watching nobody's children. Like never, ever, ever, (laughs) ever, ever. So you end up falling in love with it, clearly. I don't know. I don't know. The 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 I don't know about that. (laughs) I don't I think you know what? I think that um I think what I fell in love with was being the answer. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like for me, it it wasn't it wasn't about the children. Honestly, oh, that's interesting. It, it wasn't about the children. It was about another mother like myself who was struggling, who had a need, and she couldn't afford. It it was never it was never about the children. Wow. It was about that mom, and and I felt like I can help her. I'm sitting at home. You know what I mean? Like, wow. as I think about it, it's, it, and even in all of the things that I've done in the field, it's never been about the children. It like, it's always been about, and it, I know it kind of sounds crazy even now, but when I think about the work that I've done, and especially the advocacy piece of it, it's always been for the provider or the mom or the t- is. Which, which the children, of course, is a direct beneficiary. But my focus was not necessarily making sure these kids are good. It was, let me make sure this mom is good. Let me make sure this teacher is good. Let me make sure this director is good. This owner is good. 
Because gotcha. I feel like if I do that, the children going to be good. The, absolutely. Because, and, and that's a totally, totally separate point, but it's huge because I never thought of it that way. Um, but when we think about all the people that we've come across and that we work with, mm -hmm. without everyone um, getting into the business for whatever reason that was, it still impacted, here we go with the impact, the other, meaning, you know, so your passion for children, whoever has a passion for children, they get in for that reason. It ultimately helps the parent. It helps the uh, employer so that that parent can get to work. It helps, um, like you said, you teach providers as well. Um, and a lot of times that's difficult as well. Even being a director, sometimes you don't know where to go, who to get help from. Um, that, that's huge. I never thought about that. And it definitely reminded me of my mom because I, I remember how she got into the business. Same type, same thing in the neighborhood. Can you watch the neighbor's child? And she ended up being the, um, the, uh, the, the neighborhood child care program that ended up serving hundreds and hundreds of uh, children and families. Because for me, I still remember all of the families that were um, impacted and how she would all, even now today, she still gets calls from grandchildren of children she took care of. So it, it, it it's a cycle for sure. It's absolutely a cycle. But I realized I never even asked you that question or even knew that. You just assume that people get in this field for the children. Yeah, no. And I'm clear. I never had an interest wow. in taking care of nobody babies. <laughs> never. I'm clear about that. Right. Um, and, and so, yeah, that's, 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 that's my story. And even with sharing it with you now, though, Lee, it just, it, everything is connected. Like when I look at my body of work, it's always been about the adult and not necessarily the children in terms of my interaction. Wow. I love it though. I love it. And it's needed. It's, it's absolutely needed because everyone can't work with adults. Sometimes <laughs> you're best, you're best with the children. You're best with the children sometimes, but no, that's, that's huge. I, I want to ask more people about that too. I, I love that. I love that. Um, yeah. Cause listen, I, I have a, I have a very short attention span. Now I love infant and toddlers all day long. And let me tell you when they turn three. So my first year, my first year open, I um I took care of all children, right? From zero to 12. I did transportate Leah, I did transportation to six public schools, okay? And my little minivan. And though, and I provided care. So the, the five years that I was open, I did um 24 hour daycare. Now, again, it wasn't about the children. I was thinking about couples who needed a night out. I was thinking about people who worked third and fourth shift, who worked on a weekend. I was thinking about the mom who needed to go wash clothes, go get her hair done. So even now, as I like, even all the things with self-care, like even now, right, it's just an extension because I provided 24 hour care, not for the money because it was a real need. It was a real resources. There were not, and there still isn't a lot of safe places Absolutely. that you can send your child overnight. Absolutely. And that was huge for me. Wow. 24 hour. Okay. Yeah. 24 hours, five days a week. And listen, it, the children that I took care of were a part of my family. Like I'm, I made them a part of my family. We did everything together. I absolutely enjoyed it because again, here was the thing for me. My children were young. Yeah. So it, it just really worked out. So we had birthdays together. Like it was just this one big family that I never had. Cause I'm the only child. And I got to share that, you know, with my kids. And then when my kids start getting older, it was like, I'm done. Wow. <laughs> they, they just, it was everybody that got, I remember being in the basement myself too. Like we were in the basement of, of, of our home and that's where childcare was. And we grew up together. Yeah. We grew up together. It was one family. My husband and I still talk about this little boy. It doesn't happen now. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't happen more so because it, you know, the world has changed, but we, Sunshine, we were talking about him a few years ago. He was literally with us Christmas 
like Christmas Eve on Christmas Day, like he was with us. A lot of them, they just they halfway lived there. They have yes. Lived. And I still remember his mom was a truck driver. So mm -hmm. she, worked, she would be gone for days. And I, I remember that. But those, you know, those were the things that I remember. Um, for those who don't know, my, my mom has been in the industry 40 years. And um, I kind of took on the mantle. Unbeknownst to me, this would happen. Um, but um, I still remember, even in doing this work today, I remember the foundation. So we also don't just do it for the children. The work that we do, I truly believe in the Head Start model, which is comprehensive. And it not only focuses on the needs of the child, but it focuses on the family's needs and the community. Because without the family being good, like you said at the very beginning, without them being taken care of and being self-sufficient, then the child can't reap the benefits of, of a steady home. So um and I still remember that. I still remember, you know, my mom making chicken soup from scratch and it's cold outside. They need to eat warm. Like I remember those things. And even though they seem small, they're not. They're not. And um, wow, that's huge. That's huge. <laughs> and this, guys, this was not the topic. <laughs> this is not the topic. However, it is so real and relevant. It's relevant. Because um, this is where <laughs> this is how we got here. And uh, continue to do this work for this very reason. Hmm, I learned yeah. something new today about you. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel like I want to survey other people. You know, really, like, how did you get here, and and what, you know, what was your reason for entering this field? I mean, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I think I think it's definitely uh, worth pursuing and and gathering the data because. Um, child care has changed over the years. And like when your mom got into it and, and even when I had an opportunity to talk to your mom, she just talked about how providers stood together, you know, how they did things together, how it was just a real, um, it, it was a real community, yeah. you know, of, of providers. And, and even at the point that you entered, um, there was still some, some of a community, but I feel over the last, uh, five years, I don't know. I I, I just think the community kind of just withered away. It's not, it's not what it used to be. It's definitely not what it used to be. I know that different organizations <clears throat> are doing different things. And that's why this show is going to be important because every state does something different. And so for those of you that are listening in, we want to know what do you guys do in your state? How are you supported as a provider? What resources are available uh, for you? Now, what is on the topic is 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 about things that are um, happening at the legislative level um, in Colorado uh, specifically, and the conversation is is around how different childcare is from state to state. Yes. Yeah, and, and it was so interesting reading the article and I'm going to share the article so that everybody um, could to see to see it and read it. But um, like uh, Dr. Obiama was saying, in Colorado, they actually passed legislation where um, child care, early childhood education will become its own state department. Um, I'm not sure. This is why, again, we definitely want to have communication and engagement with other states because um, I know a lot about Pennsylvania, some other states, but um, this work will be way beyond just one state worldwide, right? Because it's children all over the world. And for those of us who work in early childhood education or work with um, children, children are children. So this work is still important. Um, but in reading it, I know that's something I've always believed in, which was um, I didn't understand why, well, I, knowing the history of child care, not early child education, but the history of child care was focused in on um, providing care for children while their parents went to work. We know we do a lot more than that. Like we educate children. When children leave our program, they are prepared for kindergarten. We teach them, we prepare them, social, emotional development, cognitive, physical, like all of those they have learned in addition to some other skills, which will make them lifelong learners. But um, Colorado passed legislation. Again, um, they will have their own state department. So they um, have state constitution that allows them to have up to 20 state departments. 
and mm -hmm. child care, early childhood education will be the 20th. So I thought that was huge um, because again, in Pennsylvania, we are still under the Department of Human Services. And I believe that is still tied to child care um, and yes. not education. Correct. Um, yeah, so therefore not sufficient funding. Um, our teachers and staff are not um, seen as, as the same in regards to pay and things like that as teachers who teach in the school district under the Department of Education. And um, more benefits will be streamlined systems, uh, more access to children and things like that. So I, I think that is a huge move. I totally agree with it. I, I, I'm interested to see where it will go and would love for all of us to raise our voices to kind of, you know, make similar moves because it's a department in itself. We are not only providing um, human services type services. We, you know, I think it's it's a department in a field of its own. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> the other thing that's really interesting, though, is even though Pennsylvania doesn't have its own department, what we do have is a lot of the things that they're trying to put in place. Like we already have a universal pre-K program, yeah. right? And that's something that they're implementing. And so I'm um, interesting to also know because the article talked about how it would save families more money and time and all these different things. And so uh, a couple of things, number one, cost of living, like what's the cost of living in Colorado compared to what it is in Pennsylvania? You know, what what do what do those uh, educational tax dollars look like? What was also interesting is that they talked about increasing or or adding a nicotine tax yes. and the smokeless tax. Well, we have the uh, beverage tax. Yes. Right. And, and so there were some similarities as to what they were doing. But I'm interested in finding out if even though we don't have our own department, are we still already up in terms of the financial support that's allocated to us, even though we don't have our own department? So I think that's interesting. Agreed. Yeah, that's something to look into. Um, I, noted, I noted the same thing in regards to like the tax, right? Mm -hmm. like you mentioned, uh, the soda tax. And um, the one other interesting thing I, I saw in there, and I was like, how are they going to do this? I, I don't know if I, well, that's what they put in the article that um, for the universal pre-K, they would have up to 10 hours per week. And I was like, did they mean 10 hours per day? Because I, I took it as 10 hours per day. I, 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 hope, I hope that was a 10 hours yeah, per day. Because I was no like, way. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure how they, how they would do that. So that was one thing I circled and was like, I want to find out more just to confirm that because, you know, of course, that's not sufficient. Um, I'm sure that's well, a typo. It yeah. has to be. <laughs> that's like, wait, because wait. What's the point? What, what, yeah. what are we doing with 10 hours a week? Right. Yeah, because right now, right, five and a half hours is what we provide um, in our um, universal pre-K program. And uh, even then, it's a higher demand for families who are working at least eight hours. It's a higher demand for more funding so that children can have um, extended hours, right? Like, I do understand five and a half hours when we're looking at Department of Education, we're looking at the school day. It is very similar. Um, but I think that's a great point in regards to looking at the amount of funding that um, they have now. How much is that tax raising? I know they had a um, when I looked at the voter percentage, um, they had high, high support for um, the universal pre-K, which is what prompted this this move, the department. Right. Right. So I, I it likened to Philadelphia in a huge way. So I'm interested. Yeah. In and 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 so ten hours a week though would 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 be two hours a day. Yeah. So we're talking about what nine to eleven, ten to yeah. twelve, like so what's interesting is I wonder I wonder because so you know, like for us we have we, we have um what is it? They get four hours, five hours, and then they can roll into CCIS for the aftercare portion. So the the article didn't say anything about any um, subsidies or additional, you know, programming. So I think that that's interesting as well. And I wonder what currently exists. Yeah. 
I was thinking um, it's similar to how our ELRC, our resource program works because it spoke to um, this department allowing for a more streamlined process, meaning this family comes and they apply for mm -hmm. um, child care support and they say my hours are and they right. stay the hours and then you are allotted this amount of funding mm -hmm. and, and that will cover so ours right now, we have two different funding sources if you have the universal pre-K and if you have extended care funding, two different like two different funders. Um, so I could only imagine if they have this department that if you as a family, you come and this is what you qualify for or this is what your need is, then that money is in this one pot under the Department um, of Early Childhood Education and it is funded according to what your need is. I could I could only assume um, they didn't put any dollar amounts um, in here, but the only other thing I thought about and tied it to was the uh, Build Better um, Act where they already have money that they're looking into. And and to me, what, what made me hopeful and excited about the direction um, that this is going with um, Colorado's uh, legislation change, as well as the Build Back Better Act, is that early childhood education is being seen, right? It, it is foundational. I know it was huge talk with it being infrastructure, right? It's needed. And, and we know it is as well. And like I said, the history was childcare, but um, we know that even when schools are shut down, I know for us, we're still open and we're still in high demand. So um, it is a huge part of allowing the economy to work um, for people to be able to go to work, go to school, do all the things that we know that we need to do, including entrepreneurs. My kids go to school every day as well. But um, you know, I, I was excited about, so it's about uh, $400 billion they have allocated to early childhood um, education and the Build Better Act. So, you know, I'm interested to see how much money this is total being um, invested into early childhood education and what we know to be a huge field and an impact on the economy overall. Yeah, absolutely. What was also interesting that that also was similar to us was they talked about providing free training. Um, they talked about the um, inspection requirements and the licensing requirements, as well as the pathway, the educational pathway. So I thought all of that was really interesting as well, because we we already went through all of that. Yes. You know, we already went through all of that. So what I want to say to mm -hmm. those of you that will be um, chiming in if you know anyone in Colorado or if there is anyone listening that is from any state that is similar to Colorado that may not have a real system or structure or financial support in place at the state level or at the federal level and you need some help navigating the system maybe you want to get into it and you're not sure you can definitely reach out uh, Aaliyah what's your email uh, email is info at aliyahjohnsonroberts.com. Okay, so I'm going to put that in the comments. Info at Aaliyah. I'm spelling your name wrong. <laughs> so anyway, as I'm writing this, uh, <laughs> I want you guys to, to um, reach out to Aaliyah um, because she's versed in this. She already knows how it works. She knows the impact and she can be a real resource for an investment of how you too can navigate the political space as well as just some of the uh, community spaces as it relates to not only how you get started, but then how do you maintain your program and also how do you manage the funding streams and, and connecting all of the programs. So you want to contact Aaliyah, info at Aaliyah Johnson Roberts. We are here on the first and third Thursday of every month at 2 p.m. Real conversations, real people, real resources around childcare, entrepreneurship, and more. Thank you for listening. And remember to share. And we yes. will see you right back here on the third Thursday. Thank you.